Tackling climate change is an urgent matter for humanity. Materials, minerals and mining are absolutely fundamental to tackling climate change. We need materials to make the transition to a low carbon, resilient and resource efficient society. We need to make sure we're getting those materials in the right way. In the past, we mined coal and we burned it, and that was our energy source. In the future, we need lithium and cobalt and graphite and various other things for our batteries, and we need silicon for our solar panels, and we need rare earth elements for our magnets in electric motors, and so on and so forth. If we are going to have enough of that stuff to make that transition work, we need to get it into the economy and keep it in the economy for as long as possible. That's why action on materials, minerals and mining is essential now. We currently have an economic model that is linear. We take stuff, we make things, we use them and then we lose them. And the problem with that is there's a finite limit to what we can take from the planet around us, both in terms of renewable resources in a given period of time and finite resources at all. And if we keep going at the rates that we've been going over the last 50 years, that's going to be a really big problem for us. The idea of a circular economy is to keep materials running around the economy for longer, using fewer in the first place, but then making sure that we uh, design products so that they last a long time, design them so that when they cannot be used anymore, we're able to remanufacture or repair them, and also then recycling things at the end of their useful lives. We've done a lot of damage to the world we live in. If we just froze the position now, it wouldn't be good enough and we need to do more. We need to regenerate, uh, repair, restore. And again, that's another aspect of the circular economy that is potentially very powerful. One of the things that people talk about a lot in the space around tackling the climate crisis is is skills and jobs and there's a green jobs task force for example. I think that's a really important point but it's also really important to remember that quite a few of the jobs that are vital for that transition might already exist or uh, might even need to grow. A classic example would be um, skills in mining and exploration for example. Very few universities teach those subjects now. A-level geology is much less common than it used to be. Undergraduate mining engineering almost extinct in the UK and indeed elsewhere in the world. So we've got a real problem coming up ahead of us. At the same time as we start to recognise we need to expand mining, we've got a shrinking and ageing workforce. So the skills agenda, the jobs agenda is something that IM3 is really concerned about and are very much involved in trying to make that work. One of the key challenges in tackling what lies before us, the biodiversity crisis, the climate crisis, is thinking about it holistically, thinking about it as a total system. We're not, as humans, particularly good at thinking in systems. Because if you're not careful, you can make a decision in one bit of the forest that has a negative impact somewhere else that you'd never even thought of and is completely unintended. I often describe it as a partially filled water balloon and you squeeze it in one place and you know it's going to pop up somewhere, but you don't know where. And then you squeeze that bit and it pops somewhere else. And if we keep on just squeezing randomly, eventually we'll burst the darn thing. So we need to be thinking systemically about the whole process. And we need to worry about making it work together. The breadth of technical interest of IM3 is a huge strength of IM3. The backgrounds, the, the areas that people work in. And one of the things that we're constantly seeking to do, striving to do, is to bring together those different expertises and, and find the synergies, find the, the spaces, the places to work together and, and, and understand how this bit of, of scientific knowledge and this bit of technical knowledge and this bit of business knowledge can work together to make a better solution for everybody involved. There is no such thing as a just transition to a low carbon society without a proper appreciation and dealing with materials, minerals and mining. They are absolutely fundamentally part of the answer and we need to engage with that thoroughly.